Hello everyone, this video is going to be about a fairly new feature in the world of step functions and it's called map tasks or map types. And what these things allow you to do is to define a parallel running workflow to process a bunch of items or a list of items. For example, in this JSON object here, we have a list of transactions. Uh, you know, there's five or so here. They're all specifying different IDs, uh, different types and different amounts, as we can see. Uh, and the use case that we're trying to solve is such that we can process each of these transactions within our step function. Maybe we want to hand off each one to a Lambda and get the Lambda to save them to a database somewhere. Uh, but previously how we had to do this using step functions was a fairly hacky approach where we had to manually create an iterator and use kind of a Lambda to glue together the logic of iterating over the items. But as of now, we can actually use the map type to automatically iterate over a list of items and process them one by one. And you can define your parallelism uh, and all sorts of different options as well. Uh, so that's what we're gonna try and do here. So I have an example set up to show you. Uh, so let's take a look at, let's first start with the picture over here. Um, so we're starting and we have a input that goes to a validate function. And you can see here, based on the visual image, we can see that there's multiple running concurrently. It's kind of what it's trying to show with the multiple boxes here. Uh, and then once it's validated, it gets passed off to a complete, which is a pass task, and then you're done. Uh, so let's walk through what's actually happening here. Uh, so the input, like I was kind of alluding to, is going to be a JSON object with these transactions. Uh, so let's look at this. So we're starting at validate all, and the validate all is a type map. Uh, we're defining the input path, and we're saying the items path is the transactions key. And as a reminder, transactions is the key where the items are located. So that's what that's referring to. Uh, we can set the max concurrency. Zero by default means unlimited concurrency, but say you wanna throttle this by maybe only one at a time or five at a time, you can change this number to whatever you want. Uh, and then what we're doing down here is we're getting into the actual logic of the iterator. So we wanna start at a validate task and that validate task is defined down here and it's a type task obviously and it's a pass off to a Lambda function and when it's done, it goes to the complete task task is down here and it's just a pass and we see that the end is true uh, and then we're just piping the output in the result path so let's just take a quick look at the lambda now uh, so what the lambda will do is take a item so every input to this lambda function is going to be a single one of those transactions so we're just going to return a concatenated um, event or concatenated response with the transaction ID plus the type that was passed into the Lambda function. Obviously in your use case, maybe you wanna save this to a database, maybe you wanna transform it in a certain way. But the neat thing is here that whatever you return from the Lambda function will get converted into a list on the step function side. So for instance, uh, if we go back over here, if you pass in a list of you know 10 items into the start and you run it through the validate in this case, and each validate is returning a, a concatenated transaction ID and type, um, the output to the step function, so currently it's just being passed to end, is gonna be a list of all of those transaction ID plus types. Uh, so we're gonna see a real example of this in a moment here. So this is what's happening in the step function definition itself. Uh, let's give this a run to kind of demonstrate how this actually works. And I'm gonna go to start and just paste in my input click on start. Okay, wow, this was done almost instantly, so that's great. Scrolling down now, um, let's click on kind of the back box here. The back box corresponds to the input to the map task. Uh, so if we go into input here, we can see that we have the list of items that we just passed in, and you can see the map iteration details, so how many succeeded, how many failed, canceled, in progress, yada, yada, yada. Uh, now if you click on an individual box here, uh, if you look at the input, you can see the input to this was this specific one. Uh, so this was the first task that I had and the output. And you can see that my Lambda function performed the translation there. And obviously no exception was thrown. Now, if we look at um, the output of the map task should be a list of all those concatenated transaction IDs and types. And that's exactly what we have here. So the neat part about this is that in this kind of task here, you can define a, a very complex workflow that has you know retries and side branches or whatever you want and kind of make that a child workflow of your main workflow. 
Uh, so this greatly allows for dynamic concurrency in your step function to iterate over a bunch of inputs and process them uh, by performing some repetitive task over and over again. A very cool feature just got announced fairly recently. Highly suggest you check it out. Um, and if you like this video, I have many more on step functions. I'll put them on the side here and in the description section below. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.